Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video. Today I want to finally sit down and do a review of the CJRB Hyperlite. So this was a knife designed by Joe Flowers. You know, he's done lots of stuff with um, Condor and I'm trying to think. There's another company that I feel like he's worked with quite a bit. Anyway, this is done in collaboration with CJRB. Um, it's designed to be very, you know, lightweight, compact, easy to carry around. There's a couple other little things. Actually, let's just let's just touch on a couple of things before uh, I get into a little bit of use and testing. So, <clears throat> designed to be hyper light. Okay, so to kind of be an easy carry, you know, throw this in a pack or a pocket. Um, and not have to worry about it. I'll, I'll have another application I think this would work really, really well for as well. But living up to its name, this is only eight and a half inches long, 4.3 ounces in the sheath. All right. The one drawback to that would be the handle, which is small, but as you can see, they take a little bit of the blade here, which ends up making the grip area almost four out four inches <laughs> um so that's actually not too bad so i've got a full four finger grip there um you notice the back of my palm does come off a little bit now i'll tell you this though the handle is quite thin so even if i you know take a full grip on this i get a little bit of wiggle by the way i'm wearing gloves it's cold today <laughs> so um I have used this actually quite a, you know what I've used this for a lot is in the kitchen and I've taken it on a couple trips where I knew I was going to be doing some, some, uh, food prep and it works really well for that as well. So I've got plenty of use on this with bare hands and in my comments will be based as much on that as, as they are with gloves. It is a little better with gloves on, I will say with bare hands, the grip being as thin as it is, is a little more fatiguing than I would want generally. However, we've got to keep the intended use in mind here, okay? By the way, out of the sheath, this is 3.5 ounces. Now, I do want to do a couple of little comparisons here. One knife that I would see as an obvious competitor would be the Kaiser Harpoon. All right, similar, you know, small knife, easy to carry, easy to drop in a pocket, uh, very compact, a little more ergonomic, all right? And as you can see, this is a Maverick custom design, um, not quite as well known as uh, Joe Flowers, but pretty well known and a very popular fixed blade from Kaiser and one I happen to like a whole lot. Now it is definitely heavier. This comes in at six ounces compared to the four ounces on the Hyperlite, just to give you a bit of uh, added re um, context, more companion comes in at 4.1 ounces, which, you know, is very, very good. And I actually brought this, I think this would be another knife that could fill the role that I'm suggesting for the Hyperlite. All right. So as we uh, get into this discussion, let me go ahead and do a little bit of cutting and carving for you. The stick is just out of reach. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got some sticks here. Uh, this one happened to break off this way as I broke it, but it will make a good uh, demonstration. One thing I will say about this is any kind of fine, whoops, I'm not even on film. So one thing I will say again about this is any kind of real fine cutting task, it really, really excels at. It's thin behind the edge. And fairly thin in profile overall. So feather sticks, this is not the ideal thing for feather sticks, but uh, for this kind of task, it's really, really good. Um, would I baton with this? Yeah. Um, this is just stabbing into the ground. Hold on, there's a root here just off camera that maybe be used to, uh, there we go. Let's 
there. Uh, so you can baton with it. Um, it's not a huge, heavy, crazy size of knife. Okay, so I wouldn't want to go too nuts uh, pounding on this. But um, the one thing I will say is, let's say you're doing a cross cut. This knife, this stick is a little too small, but it'll work for demonstration purposes. Actually, let's use the smaller one. So I can use this one as a baton. All right, I'm sure many of you have seen this trick before, but this knife has little or no chopping power. So if you're gonna do any kind of cross cut, you're gonna have to do it this way. Uh, I'm particularly awkward because I'm reaching across this silly uh, tripod, but I definitely think it could get the job done. Um, Okay guys, so we've done a bunch of, uh, of carving here. You can see that you can generate a pretty decent, there you go, pretty decent amount of uh, feather sticking there. That's because of that nice thin edge profile. Um, let me talk about a couple of other things before we, uh, we sort of get to a comparison portion. Uh, where I think this fits in really well, because of its design, because of its um, size and weight and feel in hand and materials, okay, I think this would be a really good um, survival kit type of knife, really good knife to keep in, you know, your snowmobile or your car or your truck or whatever the case may be. You know, that AR RPM 9 steel holds an edge really well, but it's also very, very stainless. So I see this working really well as a, you know, pack this thing somewhere and forget about it type of knife. And then it's large enough and substantial enough that it can get some work done if you need it, right? I'm not going to pick this purposely over some other bushcraft knives that I have or some other EDC fixed blades that I have because of that handle. Uh, it's just quite thin. And if you've got to do a lot of hard work, it, it gets a little uncomfortable. And I've, I've spent some time with this in the kitchen. I've spent some time with it in the bush. I've spent some time cutting with this alongside of some other knives. And the the ergonomics eventually become a bit of an issue, especially with bare hands. Now, I will say with gloves on, right? Now, you never know if you're going to have gloves when you get into whatever situation you happen to be in. But uh, nonetheless, with gloves on, it's a little bit nicer. In fact, quite a bit nicer. Okay, so um, I think this worked really, really well, well as, a, as a backup knife, as a survival kit knife. It works really well as a larger EDC as well. Um, I like the fact that this can flex into food prep if you wanted to do that. So if you're EDCing this knife, and, and uh, let me grab the, the sheath here really quick. So just like a number of years ago, I don't know why that was so difficult, but a number of years ago we had the, the Quaken from CRKT. It was a Burnley collaboration and it had a lanyard like this on it. And I talked back then about looping this lanyard either around your belt loop or around your belt itself. And then as you extract the knife from pocket, well really, you know, I'm just gonna do that, take it out of my pocket. And then I can't lose the sheath because it's, it's hooked onto my belt. Or if you of course extract it quickly, let me just, you know, you can just do that. And there you go, you've got a knife ready and able to be used pretty quickly and effectively. Now, for comparison purposes, there are a couple of knives I also wanted to bring in here. An obvious one to fill that same role and to fill it at a cheaper price point would be the Mora Companion, especially if you're gonna, I don't know, maybe you're building um, outdoor survival kits for friends or family members, you know, and you're gonna build five or six of them. Well, you know, buying five or six more companions is gonna be a lot easier than buying five or six of the CGRB Hyperlite. Um, or if you're gonna have one in multiple locations, say you want one in your truck and one in your house and one in your ATV and one on your snowmobile type of thing, instead of just moving one bag around, then the companion might be a better option there as well because of the, the price point. These are not expensive. I think they go for around $70, but that, that is something to consider. Now, from the EDC standpoint, 
All right, we'll bring it, take a look again at the Kaiser Harpoon. All right, you can see this one is in D2. I think these are out there now in 14C28N, which would be a little more similar to to the Hyperlite. Both of these are pretty nice EDC options. They're pretty effective cutting tools and they're they're light and easy to carry and the sheath is pretty effective on both. So I could see both of these functioning nicely as an EDC option. The D2 steel being coated, this could fill that same role that I was talking about, uh, a knife they're gonna put in a pack and forget about or put in your car and forget about. Um, but, you lose some effectiveness. Sorry about the nose, guys. It's just cold out here, and you know what happens when you're outdoors in the cold. You really can't do anything about it, and I'm not editing it out because I'm too lazy. Uh, so, one last knife I thought I might throw in by way of comparison. If you're interested in this, but you go, yeah, Kevin, I, I, it's just that ergonomic thing that you bring up is a problem for me. Now, I, you know, again, I think this is a trade-off. It's meant to be very light. This could almost be a neck knife. And so for that reason, something you're going to have on you all the time or having your pack taking up no room, I think it makes sense to go with that very thin handle profile, right? That becomes a bit of a plus. However, if you want to get away from that, you don't need that ultra lightweight uh, capability. The other knife you may want to think about would be the Steel Wheel Roamer. I threw this in because there are a bunch of versions of this. They're all a little bigger, they're all a little heavier, and they're all around that same price point okay so uh, this could be uh, a potential option for you if uh, you want something a little more substantial but you still want to keep it in that you know budget ish price point let me get these guys out of the way and we'll wrap this up so conclusions on the cjrb hyperlite I really, really like this. I like the blade shape. I like the design. I love how easy this is to carry, and I'm willing to make that sacrifice. I do actually drop this in my pocket quite frequently because it's so small, right? You know, yeah, would my would my Lion Steel M4 be more comfortable in hand for prolonged use? Yes, but for EDC, I often don't need that kind of use. Uh, the other thing I find myself doing with this a lot is kitchen stuff. So uh, for a very affordable price point, Again, I think these are like between $50 and $70. You get a knife that has a lot of flexibility and a lot of versatility, even though, you know, as, a, as an outdoor survival knife, would you want this to be your exclusive bushcrafting knife? That's probably more questionable, all right? Other than that use, uh, this has a lot of utility, and especially in the outdoors, a lot of practicality as, as a as a lightweight, easy to carry option. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will talk to you soon.